plus standard library so today we'll try to understand the use of that so uh, before going there i'll summarize in a single line like why it is used and then i'll give you the example so the real deal of using destroy function is to just deallocate your object but without freeing the memory meaning you will just call the destructor but you will not free the memory where that object was stored so if you have this kind of scenario then it is better to use this destroy function to deallocate or let's say destroy or destruct the object so this is space construction only so let's say you want to hold some foo class let's say you have foo class and you want to store like 100 elements of that class then you create a memory to store that much of foo and then in that memory you just say that okay because you get a raw memory here you will type cast it and then you will have the buffer of 100 elements so this is just the space construction but there is no object yet okay now let's go to the object construction so this is the object construction you will let's say out of that 100 you are trying to create 20 objects and this is placement new way of constructing the object you will give the address where it should get constructed and this is the object which is going to get constructed so this is the place and this is the object so this object is constructed here using placement new i have already explained what is placement new and new operator in my previous video like yesterday's video so if you are interested you can get that maybe somewhere here in i button so this is now construction so construction have happened so initially you created the space like just the memory now you have constructed the object on top of that memory let's go further now you destroy only the object but keep the memory so this is what we want to learn so this is the destroy function and you will give the buffer i mean the start and the end so this is a range function so like you will take start and end from where to where you want to call the destructor so this is the starting point and let's say 20 times you know you created 20 objects so you will give 20 here it will call the destructor that many times for all the objects and then this is the best part reusability now you have again full length like from 0 to 99 you have complete 100 elements buffer available to reuse it like you don't have to ask os to get the memory again and again so that you can create a dynamic object on that no you don't have to ask because that also takes some time right because os will have to give you some chunk of memory so it has to do something and if if this operation is so frequent that you will create and destroy the object so frequently then better use your own memory like how we did in the first place so you created this memory and on top of that you always create and destroy the object okay so yeah we were here now we have done the reusing part now let's look at the final thing you just destroy like here you again created five elements right from 0 to 5 then you create five and now you just destroy all of them now you have to do operator delete because you have to remove the original memory so now we are closing up okay so your program is being terminated then you go ahead and clean that memory which you created first so this one let's look at the complete program in one shot so we have the comments also you can pause the video and try to just go through each and every line it will make sense okay now let's look at the summary here so the summary is use of std destroy functions are let's say if you are working with a row or uninitialized memory then in that case you can use destroy function otherwise if you are using new let's say new operator in that case you don't have to call the destructor meaning you don't have to call the destroy because anyway you are going to call the delete on that object then it will call the destroy and i mean it will call the destructor and deallocate the memory so it will do two things so if that is not the case then you will use this destroy to actually destroy the object second case is if you have to create object using placement new so we just saw that and another is you want fine grain destruction in a custom data structure meaning you want to control the destruction 
the way you want okay in that case or wherever you want so in that case also you can use this on your custom data structure and it's a low level tool but essential for writing in safe robust container like classes so meaning let's say you have a vector std vector we have right so let's say you're writing your own vector in that case do you think vector should always grow and shrink i think not because let's suppose you are just pushing the data into the vector then in that case it will grow like from 2 to 4 4 to 8 8 to 16 and then let's say you're trying to destroy some element let's say you destroyed eight elements it will not go and flush out the memory right it will just keep that memory it will just destroy the object so it should destroy the object it should not flush the memory because you may push the data again okay or like these all things are like requirement dependent so if you want more control with you, then you can go with this destroy and it looks cleaner. Okay. So yeah. And yeah, let me just quickly go up operator, delete and operator uh, new. I have created video on these. You'll get the link in the description or maybe somewhere here. So if you are new to this, you can consider watching those videos. So I think we are done. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next videos. Bye bye. Take care.